Howdy y'all, Bearded Carpenter here. I'm at Paradise Point and I've started putting on the uh, the boards for the board and batten siding that goes around the kitchen. And I've got this end, all the boards on this end, there's quite a bit of trim work that I'll have to do, trimming around the window and allowing for the settling, the trim that will take care of that. And now I've started on the, the front wall or the kitchen wall around here. And I'll move you around there and I'll show you what I've got going there. I have the first board on the corner of the kitchen wall, the long 16-foot wall. And down here, I have another board on. I'll start at the corner of either end, and I'll work towards the center. Now, I don't have a door built. I just have a temporary door up there for right now. But there will be a set of steps that will come out, and that is going to cover up any thing in the center as far as the board and batten goes. So I'll work towards that middle point and I'll keep things pretty much symmetrical, or I hope to anyway, uh, coming in from both corners all the way down. It should be coming up against the doorway. It should uh, be pretty close to having everything even. I'm using 1 by 12 pine, a southern yellow pine for all of these boards. This has been cut or sawed on a band mill. It's been stacked and stickered. It was pretty green when it was cut. But I wanted to point something out to you here. And you may have, have seen this before on other channels where they have talked about this. If you look at the growth rings, they're all going like this. And some people referred to that as the smile of the growth rings. Now what will happen as this board begins to dry it will have a tendency, it may not always do it, but it will have a tendency to gain a crown like this. Now what I do, if you look at the back side, there's two grooves cut in there. I cut them in, oh, a little bit, about of a third of the way of the thickness of the board. And I come in the same from either side. I just use a, a skill saw with a guide on it. And that will relieve some of the the strength or the pressure of that board to where when you put a screw or a nail in the center, it will have a tendency to cause that board to flatten out on the wall. And I've had to do that to quite a few of these that had a, had a cup in it. Now, if you turn that around and try to put it on like that, you're going to touch in the center and it's harder to pull the outside edges down flat uh, on the wall. So I always turn a board that's got a cup like this. I always put that cup to the outside and cut my little grooves in there so that I can have a, a little more of a chance to get this to sit flat on the wall. I'll have to fire up the generator and I'll show you what I'm doing with this board here. If you can lay a square or a straight edge on that board on the face side and you can see that it's rocking there you'll know that you've got a, a pretty good cup. This will be the outside face. So what I'll do is turn that over and cut my two grooves on the back side. Now this board is ready to cut the length and uh, we'll put it on the wall.
been putting the batten strips on the boards. These strips, I ripped them two and three quarters of an inch wide. This just bandsawed uh, lumber, yellow pine, and I fastened them on with a, my finish gun. See what I've done. That little hole up there is where a vent will be. We painted them green to match the color of the roof. I just haven't put them in yet. But I've got the settling area set there. You can see there's a gap that goes all the way down. And I've got a board that I'll put over that and I'll only attach it on the top side. And that will let it slip or slide down over the top ribbon where the batten strips are butted into. And on the, the window trim, I just butted it on the top side up against that ribbon that the battens are going up against. This is all yellow pine. It'll be treated with boiled linseed oil eventually. These boards were cut and they dried really, really good. We had some hot, hot weather. And uh, when I checked the moisture content in these, they were down to 6% and a few of these boards were in the upper five, you know, 5.78 or 9% percent moisture content so I'm very comfortable I know a lot of people worry about and I guess they have a, a good reason to about the board shrinking and they will definitely do that we let these air dry in the heat and had them covered with some sheet iron and they were underneath a big shade tree so we were pretty safe there and the boards that I've put up they were up several days and they never did move they never did shrink anymore they were really, really dry. So I feel comfortable on the batten strips to nail into both sides of it. I'll get up here a little bit closer. You can see that uh, there's nails on both sides going into this board and this board. Now, I'm very confident that these boards have shrunk all they're going to. When you get your moisture content down to around 6%, you're, you're pretty dry, especially for this area of the state. I have these batten strips cut they're just cut about an inch long and i'll mark them at the bottom and and put them up um, let's see get back over here and i'll show you what i do at the bottom on them you can see there's an angle here that is a 30 degree angle that i like to use that was what my dad always did and i just like to kind of carry on the, the family tradition there you can see i've got the ribbon on and i just set that on there with some screws because I'll have to take that piece down and take this piece down that's coming up into the doorway area because I'll make a piece of trim that will go above the door. We just have a temporary door on for now and I'll be able to take that off and cut it up against the header piece of trim that goes uh, over the door. But you can see how tight these boards have stayed. They've been up there about a month or so. And they have not moved. They have not shrunk. So I'm in good shape with that. I went ahead and put the batten boards up there just to get the length. And I just marked it at the bottom. And so I've got 12 pieces there to put on. And I'm going to cut them all and set them right back where they were. And then I can go down through there with my air nailer, my finish gun, and uh, put them all on. Okay, I've got all the batten strips on. The siding is finished on the kitchen. Up there above the window, you can see a one by six that goes across. I've got it screwed just on the bottom side into that ribbon that I butted the longer battens in that go up and down all the way to the bottom. Now what this will do since it is not attached on the top, it will allow everything from that sliding board or the board that will let the upper part slide is not attached to that. So that will be able to come down as the settling takes place. And after the settling takes place, we can come back and we can put screws or nails into that upper ribbon that the shorter batten strips are uh, butted down to. It's kind of in the shade there in a little bit of a shadow on this board that goes across on the kitchen wall there's a little bit of a gap there that's where the trim will be for the door the upper header trim and i will have trim that comes down the sides also but all the batten strips are on and i'm glad to have that portion done mm -hmm. 